Welcome everyone to a little new series. Welcome to design and inspiration tips for Planet Zoo. Today we are going to look at natural borders and how they actually work and what you can use to improve your natural borders. Because in modern zoos, you will try to hide your barriers and your borders of your habitat by natural elements, such a thing like nature, like foliage, or some creative ways um, of hiding the actual barriers of your habitat. Today we are going to look at a few design ideas you can utilize for your zoos and we're going to start briefly by checking how exactly the invisible fence or the null barrier how it is called in Planet Zoo works. Now in Planet Zoo you have different types of barriers and the one we are talking about today is the null barrier which is also called the invisible area uh, or invisible barrier. You can draw this around your habitat to make sure that the game knows exactly which are the borders of your habitat. You need this so that the game can calculate how much square meters and space the animals have and where exactly the keepers need to fulfill their stuff and where the animals are dedicated to be in. However, you want to make sure that these habitats look as natural as possible by utilizing everything in the game that can help you to make sure that your animals cannot escape. Because the moment you're going to use the null barrier, it effectively is only an info for the game. That means an animal can easily walk over. There is no kind of barrier. It's just there to tell the game that there is the border of the habitat. Now, what you want to do, you want to make sure that you use in-game pieces to create another barrier in there. Now this is how you do it. You just make sure that you use pieces in the game that create a natural kind of block or like a, um, let's say it is is almost like a little block um, hit space area where the animals cannot throw it through. If I do click on one of the animals over here you can see what I'm telling you. This is a lion and if I press H and see the traversal area you can see the animal cannot escape because I used a lot of these rocks here to make sure that they cannot escape. This is how you do it in the game. This is how the null barrier works and now let's go into it into my design ideas for you to build very creative but also nice looking natural barriers. All right, number one is the already shown natural barrier in the water. So water is a great way to separate your habitat from each other. However, you have animals that can swim. Now, for those animals that can swim, you need to make sure that there is something in the water that makes sure the animals cannot swim through. You want them still to go into the water to make it realistic as I as I made this here. I left some kind of stuff in here to the very shallow area next to the riverside but I threw a lot of pieces inside of the river to make sure that there is a natural block. Now what you want to do you want to always search for pieces that have a very large hitbox as some of the bigger rocks over here or the logs they create a very big hitbox where the animals cannot path through and it's kind of a tricky thing to do but once you figure out what exactly is the gaps you can go for you can make this look very natural indeed use some of the VFX effects in the game to make it look a bit more active um, hide some of the ugly stuff down below be, below these um, uh, VFX effects as, as you can see over here there's a whole bunch of stuff hidden in here which doesn't look too nice but um, by placing all these effects it looks very natural very flowing um, and yeah, the lions can still go into the water and use it, drink, go for a swim, but they cannot escape because they cannot swim through. So this is the first one. It is the water used as a barrier. We will actually look at this a little bit more in, in, in the future because there's one more thing you can do with water. But for now, animals that can swim, you need to put some stuff in the water. And I will provide you a blueprint of my uh, layout over here so you can throw that into your water to create this wonderful uh, river look if you want to do this. So, But let's now jump to the second one. All right, the second one is a very famous one. This is the sunken habitat and one of the things that most people already do. So this might not be news to you, but I still wanted to include that because I think it's a great idea uh, to have. Now, as you can see over here, this is um, a lemur habitat in a half dome style. But what I did over here, I sunk the habitat a whole bunch down so that the animals cannot jump over and escape. So what I did over here is basically, I take the terrain, I bring it down here, and then I kind of draw a little wall over here. I did use the in-game barriers here but you don't need to. You can also use the null barrier and then just build your own wall of your liking. It's very cool. The people can get very close and look down into the habitat. Your animals cannot escape. It's very efficient. It's something that many many zoos do and it's very simple. You just need to create yourself a fence. I will provide this fence uh, for you guys as well. At the end of the episode you can grab it from the blueprint down below and then uh, you can use it yourself. Just throw it around, sink your, your habitat down 
and then it looks something like that and you have this little uh, dried ditch down here where the animals can still run around and have some fun um, but the animals um, are having a good time they can hide a bit on down there but the people can see them so it's a win-win situation for everyone and I think it's one of the most efficient yet good looking design ideas for natural barriers Number three on the list is the wonderful terrain itself. Yeah, you can use the terrain tools in Planet Zoo quite efficiently to also create some natural barriers. As you can see, this is my doll sheep habitat over here in Yosemite Valley. And as you can see, I only do have a fence over here. It is again the sunken habitat technique I used here to make sure that they cannot escape but still leave it very open. But the other side of the habitat, as you can see, is a very, very tall nature um, and terrain block. You can see there is a little bit of a, um, a train going up on here, but the animals cannot go uh, that steep. So you can utilize um, the, the fact that animals cannot traverse through very, very steep walls. So as soon as you go to like 70, 80, even 90 degrees of a wall face with the terrain, they cannot go up there. So it's very easy to use the terrain to create a natural habitat border. If I can quickly show it to you, if I uh, click here and then let's say um, the traversable area, you, oops, this was not meant to be happening. Um, this is the traversable area of the animals and you can see they can move around a lot in this habitat but they cannot go up here so this is um, very simple very easy how you can do it it looks super natural actually um, there's nothing nothing too bad about this habitat in, indeed but um, yeah if we just click the barrier down here you can see it's going all the way through the rocks through the terrain in the backside um, it's just there to again just tell the game that there is the habitat border and yeah the animals can use it it looks very cool and it's very simple to do honestly also for franchise this is one of the cheapest ways of doing it you don't have any maintenance costs which in fact is actually one of the biggest uh, advantages though of natural barriers anyways they don't cost any maintenance cost in the game so for franchise always recommend to do this now let's jump on to the fourth one now this is a very simple one. This is again water, but in contrast to the first one where the animals can swim, there are a lot of animals in the game that cannot swim. So the likes of, for example, monkeys and apes, they don't go into the water and swim. That means you can use the water to make sure that they cannot traverse inside uh, a certain area in your habitat, or as I did it over here, that they cannot reach this lower fence. So if you want to have, for example, uh, a monkey island where the people can really get close to the animals and uh, look at them uh, you don't want to have that high and tall wall you can have a little ditch as I did it over here fill it with water the animals won't be able to traverse and then you can have your very low fence on the other side or if you want to use climbable material you can do so and just put some water around and the animals cannot climb it that's the way of just using water as a natural barrier and in this case it's actually the water the barrier and not the pieces in the water so using water is always a good idea if your animals do not swim. All right, next up is a very simple one, but still I think one of the most powerful ones. And this is foliage and rocks. So you can see this is my Siberian tiger habitat over here. And you can see there is a lot of foliage and rocks going on everywhere in the habitat. In fact, even at the end, you can see there's a whole waterfall and a whole wall formed by uh, rocks and stuff. This way, you can make sure that this almost looks like a, a sunken habitat, which it isn't. I, I just created these um, rock faces here to make sure that the animals cannot jump up here and, and climb. At some points, I just make sure that the animals cannot go here and climb up these uh, um, these pillars but in fact I always used rocks and stuff to create these barriers and I will give you a few pl uh, blueprints of some rock formations you can use as a wall it's pretty simple you just slap them together and it creates a natural border the animals cannot go through they cannot climb on them they cannot jump over them so it's very powerful yet very very cheap and it looks good and um, to make it not look very let's say um, uh, very boring and uh, it's kind of you know uh, dull with all these uh, rocks you can always put some foliage in between kind of um, change the mood a little bit by putting some greenery in between and shrubbery just to make it look a bit more interesting as I did all over here and then uh, you can vary your stuff a bit more but yeah this is uh, number four actually number five already um, is basically using foliage and the wonderful rocks in the game to create some natural borders the second last tip in today's video is actually the opposite of the sunken habitat. It is the raised habitat. Now, 
Obviously, what you can also do, you can raise the area where your animals in are in and make sure that the people are going in a lower area if you do provide a certain fence for the animals. So basically what I've done here, I kind of switched the game. You can see that I created this raised area for the orangutans. Um, in here, I put a fence around out of metal because they cannot climb the metal, which in fact they could in real life, but in the game they don't, so you can use it that way. Um, and then the people can walk down here in this area and what you can do to bring the people closer to the animals You can build stuff like that like viewing platforms that have a certain ditch in between or like a little gap As you can see it's almost like a little canyon and the people just walk up here And then I have a wonderful view towards the raised area, but this way you create a bit of a change um, you create a bit of a layered area and Especially for arboreal animals as the orangutans are this is really cool and really powerful you can always build some bridges like that to you know get the animals from one area to the other and just make sure that this looks kind of cool and gives you a bit of a, a different idea of how you can make these habitats work but I'm a big fan of these raised habitats um, because they quite changed the mood a little bit people seem to use the the sunken habitats way more often but I think there's a certain appeal in those raised habitats as well now, the last one is something that is not actually a, a real barrier if you want, but there is one piece in the game that is actually acting like a natural barrier you can always use, and this is the elephant grass. Let me just quickly show what I mean. If I go down below into the ground, you can see there's a whole bunch of elephant grass turned around and then put right below the ground level. The reason why people do this is mainly because it creates a block and animals cannot traverse. Let me show you by clicking one of these capuchin monkeys. I definitely need to pause the game, they are too quick. And now let's hit the traversable area and you can see that they cannot traverse the ground over here even though they could they just cannot because there is the elephant grass in here as you can see over here this even is so powerful it creates a traversable area on top of the elephant grass sometimes um, so be careful with how you use the elephant grass but there is a good chance you can use this for many many different things I did this also on the other side here let me just move over I kind of separated the capuchin monkey and the pygmy hippo habitat by elephant grass. So if you want to make a natural border out of foliage, I highly recommend to use the elephant grass, whether you put it down below in the ground as I did it here or if you use it in the river as actual grass. Um, you're free to do it, the game allows this to you, it's a very creative game that allows you to do this and I highly recommend to test this on your own, uh, but beware the elephant grass has a freaking large hitbox that means one of these elements already has a huge effect so be careful with the usage um, and don't overdo it make sure to check the uh, traversal area every now and then it really helps out a lot and uh, yeah that should be it guys and now uh, to kind of summarize I will now uh, put this all again on the screen so you can see all these different uh, areas now so we had uh, a lot of different techniques to show you. So we have got the first one, which is the water idea, where you put stuff in the water to make sure that the animals do not swim across a certain area in the water. You can do so by mix and match different uh, types of rocks, foliage and stuff, and just check the traversal area if they do. Then we had the sunken habitat, which is one of the most common ones to do. Um, you can always sink the habitat down, make sure that the wall is steep enough so they, the animals cannot escape, put a little low fence on the higher area so the animals can just not uh, climb out if they are climbable animals and that's how you do the third one in the list is the natural barrier by using terrain now terrain obviously is a very powerful thing um, because the same rule applies as for the sunken habitat as soon as you reach a certain incline the animals cannot traverse it anymore and you can basically do this quite easily easily now after this we looked at the water in terms of a water barrier because there are animals in the game that are basically not able to swim basically they don't go in the water some of them might be in real life but they just try to avoid the water so you can use a water ditch a little flow of water to make sure they don't go from one area to the other so for example that's how people do these kind of monkey islands and ape islands uh, working pretty well indeed and you can get people very close to the habitat and animals do not escape pretty powerful pretty cool 
Next one was the um, foliage and rock work, which you can use. There's a whole bunch of stuff you can use um, and, and kind of create some natural borders and stuff. Uh, you can check out the blueprint down below in the description. I provide you guys with a lot of natural barriers uh, that you can use and strap together and so just make your own habitat if you want. The next one in the list then um, was the uh, raised habitat, which is also very interesting uh, because with the raised habitat you have basically the opposite of the sunken habitat. It is uh, kind of creating a raised platform where the animals are on where they cannot climb down to the ground and then you can make some raised raised viewing platforms for the people to see the animals. The huge advantage is that in the center of the of the raised platform the people uh, the animals have a good privacy and you can use it that way. And the last thing was elephant grass. Yeah, we all know it. It's a very powerful piece, but uh, don't overuse it. It creates a very powerful block and uh, blockade you can even say uh, you can use that one, but uh, I recommend to be very careful with it because it is in fact very powerful. All right. I hope you guys enjoyed today's little tips and tricks uh, video or inspiration and design ideas, I want to call it. I will provide you guys with a lot more of those. I'm pre-recording them now because I have a bit of time at hand and I have got a lot of ideas. So in case you want to see them, make sure to subscribe to the channel and to get the notification when the video drops. And if you want to see some more stuff, you can go to my Discord channel. There's always a lot of great people that want to help you. And also, um, I have got a new discord channel in place uh, for the members and subs you can you know see there some some teasers and stuff like that as well so all the kind of stuff is in place now i really hope you guys enjoy and um, let me know in the comments down below what of these tips is your favorite design idea for natural barriers or do you have one i missed out on so let me know in the comments down below i hope you guys enjoyed and it was helpful and now have a wonderful day and see you in the next one Goodbye.